In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the general transformation matrix that will reflect a point in a line that makes an angle theta with the x-axis. Okay? Now, the way that we've done these transformations is to consider what happens to the points uh, 1, 0 and 0, 1. And this is really no different. This construction, however, is actually quite onerous. So you're going to have to bear with me, right? So here is my point uh, 1, 0. OK, so let's label that as 1. Now, this point, when it is reflected in this line, will appear somewhere up here. OK? Now, if we draw this line here, so we're going to join that bit up, OK? And I'm also going to drop a perpendicular, so from the point down to the x-axis. OK? And that makes a right angle. Now, if this is a reflected point, if that's theta, then this must also be theta. OK? So that's the first important point here. As well as that, if this length is 1, this length must also be 1. Now, what we have is a right angle triangle drawn with a hypotenuse of 1 and an angle of 2 theta, theta plus theta. So the height of this triangle okay, can be worked out using basic trigonometry. We can see that sine of 2 theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so the opposite side of this right angle triangle is sine 2 theta. Likewise, cosine 2 theta is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1. And so cosine 2 theta is representative of the base of the triangle. So the coordinates of where 1, 0 has been mapped to are cosine 2 theta, sine 2 theta. And so the consequence is that in our reflection matrix, 1, 0 has gone to cosine 2 theta, sine 2 theta. Now that's the easy bit, OK? The first column in our reflection matrix, OK? The more challenging bit is looking at what happens to 0, 1. Now 0, 1 is going to get mapped somewhere down here. OK, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, well, that's probably not quite right. So let's do this fairly accurately. So I'm just trying to make sure that this makes a right angle. So probably be down here somewhere. So let's measure that out. So that's about 14, uh, sorry, uh, 13 centimetres. So about 26, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's put it here. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to pop it there. OK. So I'm going to draw a line there. OK. And I'm also going to draw a line going to the origin. And I'm also going to have a perpendicular line going up to the x-axis. Now, the problem is that my diagram is quite small. And this is always the consequence of... Uh, drawing this out. So I'm going to zoom in on this little triangle here, OK, that I've got embedded here. So this little triangle looks like this. This is the angle theta. Now, what's important to recognize is that because that line is a mirror line, this line is going to be perpendicular and so, so making a right angle. So this angle will also be a right angle. So that means that this angle inside must be 90 take away theta. OK, so that's this little angle in here. So this angle here must be 180 take away 90 take away theta. 
And so that must be 90 plus theta. Okay, that's quite small. Right, what else can we do? I'm just trying to fill up my diagram with angles now. What I am going to do is I'm going to call this angle phi. Okay, the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to work out phi because then I can very easily work out the coordinates of this point. That's my end target. I'm trying to work out the coordinates of the transformed point. This is what I'm interested in. Okay. Now, notice also that that, because that is 1, 0, this is 0, 1. So that's of length 1. So that means that this is of length 1. Okay. Right. So that means I've got a right angle triangle in here with a hypotenuse of 1. Now, what else have we got? What would be interesting is working out what that angle is, because if that angle is theta, then that angle is 90 minus theta. If that's 90 minus theta and that's 90, then this angle would have to be theta in order for those three angles to add up to 180. So that angle is actually the same as that one there. Now, if that's theta, then this one here would also have to be theta, just from the mirror image of the point. So phi, okay, phi is 180 degrees, take away the 90 plus theta, take away the theta, which leaves me with 90 minus 2 theta. So if phi is 90 minus 2 theta, then just in the same way that we were working with sine and cosine over here, if this is the opposite side, the hypotenuse is 1, this opposite side must be sine of phi, sine of 90 minus 2 theta. And likewise, this side must be cosine of 90 minus 2 theta. So the coordinates of this point... I can write as cosine 90 minus 2 theta and negative sine of 90 minus 2 theta. OK? Right. OK, so the next thing is this. I don't particularly want to write them like that. I would prefer to be able to write them in a nice way, OK? Uh, sines and cosines of 2 theta would be much more preferable, OK? So what is cosine of 90 minus 2 theta? Well, how you can think about that is you can use uh, the compound angle formula to break that up, OK? Or you can think about it the transformations-wise. But I always like to bring back the compound angle formula, which you may or may not have looked at at this point. Okay, But you're, that enables you to write cosine of 90 minus 2 theta to be equal to cosine 90, cosine 2 theta, plus sine 90, sine 2 theta. Now, cosine of 90 is 0. Sine of 90 is 1. So actually, that's sine 2 theta. Now, if we do the same with the sine of 90 minus 2 theta, using the compound angle formula, formula for sine, that is sine uh, 90, cosine 2 theta, take away cosine 90, sine 2 theta. Cosine of 90 is 0. Sine of 90 is 1. So that's cosine 2 theta. And so this is negative cosine 2 theta. So the point 0, 1 has been mapped to sine 2 theta, negative cosine 2 theta. So that is the matrix that represents 
a reflection in the line going through the origin that makes an angle theta with the horizontal. Now, you can give that equation, um, or give the line an equation, okay, because if the, you're looking at a line making an angle theta with the horizontal, then if you're wanting to write that in the form of y equals mx plus c, well, y equals mx for this case because it's going through the origin, then we know that the gradient of a line is equal to the difference in the y over the difference in the x. So the gradient of this line being opposite over adjacent, hint, hint, for the right angle triangle, okay, is tan theta. So this represents a reflection in the line y equals tan theta x. Okay? And so that's where the matrix comes from.